Hello and welcome to Share Views uh, with an interesting company we hope today, well it is an interesting company, I hope you find the, the experience interesting, but it's uh, the CEO of uh, Seeing Machines, uh, Ken Kruger. How are you today, Ken? Fine, thank you. Yourself? I am uh, trying to battle a cold, but I'm coming through on the other side. Um, right, I mean, the first question I have, we've got a few questions from, from investors, but uh, the first question I have is that there's so much going on at your company, um, which is it's a nice let's say it's a nice problem to have. Perhaps you know you've got, you've got um, artificial intelligence, caterpillar, um, expansion in Asia, all sorts of you know Silicon Valley, everything going on there. What do you think that you know if there's anything any one thing a private investor or uh, investor should look at? What do you think it should be about your company? I guess you know the foundation technology is really coming of age. We've been working so hard on it for 16 years. The last three years, we've made huge leaps in the performance of it. It makes it really unique. It does what uh, nobody else can do, and I think what we're doing with it in automotive and fleet is really special. And those are both going to be big businesses going forward. Right, and the, the other thing is, for instance, um, the, um, the the aspect of that you know you you know you can control or hopefully help uh, help with in the in the driving experience with people falling asleep at the wheel, the drunk drivers, the whole, I mean, there's so many different things, distraction driving. Um, it, you said it's coming of age, the technology. Is it, is, it, is it literally now or is it in the next two years? How is it working? Uh, well, the first car uh, it will be a, su a semi-autonomous application, and that car will go into production, uh, we're expecting now, September 2017. So that'll be the first OEM automotive application, as opposed to the apt aftermarket or retrofit product. Right. Uh, the first question I want to ask you, just uh, a specific area, is uh, regarding uh, Fovio. What is it, and why is the market, or why do you think the market's so excited about it? Yeah. So Fovio is our uh, our new automotive division. We are 100% focused on that sector, and we've developed uh, what we're calling the Fovio chip. So a computer vision chip, which really takes time and risk out of the route to market for the OEMs. So all of our software running on an embedded platform, uh, with some flexibility in it, at a cost that uh, that well, we'll drive up margins for us and take risk out of the enterprise for the OEMs as they put into cars. Uh, Ken, I'd just like to ask you about the, um, the relationship with Caterpillar, a massive uh, um, U.S. company. Um, on the face of it, this should be you know, a great deal for you. Yeah, so we've, uh, you know, as a small company trying to execute in uh, the mining industry, you know, very, very remote locations, hard to get to, expenses, expensive to service. We felt that uh, by putting that uh, business or licensing it to Caterpillar for the first five-year term would be uh, a better way of executing. You know, they have people on the ground through their 165 dealer networks, uh, which put them much, much closer to the customer that, than we do. So we've been able to take all the costs out of that business and uh, help them sell it to those customers. Question from David T. Can you give a view as to how you see the potential for seeing machines now uh, over the two, or your, what your expectations are over the next two years and uh, what your company will look like then? Yeah, the, uh, it's a good question. I think with, uh, you know, we, we are operating in five different transport sectors. One of them is licensed to Caterpillar. The other four are, are more under our control. But really the growth areas, again, the fleet product, getting into as many vehicles as we can, as we can all around the world, getting that uh, subscription revenue flowing, and uh, really getting this, this technology into cars. Right. I mean, the, uh, the big development, let's say, last month, or the reason the share price jump was related to Fovio, Yes. Um, that leads into the next question. Carrying on from the previous question, what capital do you believe is required to get to a production revenue generating stage with Fovio? Yeah, I think that we've got uh, really to get the numbers up. You know, I was once told that uh, before you're making money in automotive, it's about a 10 year journey and about a million units. Right now, we're for forecasting a million units per year, somewhere around the 2022, 2023. So, really, for us, we're seeing a four year journey to break even and probably consuming somewhere around the you know, 50-ish million US dollars. And what's the main reason for the, for the cost? And what was it, is it just research and development? What is it? What's no, it's, the... uh, I think every program, you know, the, uh, it's a, a lot of work goes into each car is somewhat bespoke. We're trying to take a lot of that work out of it by developing our own module. The module won't come into play until probably mid-2019. So until then, it's really a software solution. Each car is a little bit different, six to 10 people per program. Uh, a lot of work, you know, selling it, building it. Um, automotive is uh, high precision, high risk. So each customer has different requirements. So it's like, a suit, it's like designing a suit, I suppose, or something it's, like that. It's uh, pretty much Making the tailoring a of a yeah. suit. It's a good, a good analogy. Right. Um, big story as well, um, the involvement or the association with Caterpillar. Sounds like a, a totally groundbreaking 
uh, relationship. Um, one can see it in a, in a rather obvious way. Um, how is that going to work? Well, you know, we, uh, I guess for us, we saw the softening of the mining industry or the resource sector. We knew that uh, Caterpillar would be able to take it to market more broadly than we could as a small company. And uh, so far, so good. You know, they're first, uh, they're about three quarters in. The, they're generating the revenue that they are, or the licensing revenue that they're providing us now is really net revenue. There's zero costs associated with it. They're finding their feet. The resource sector is starting to pick up, according to them, selling equipment. So we think it's a, it's a, a good outcome for us. And uh, that uh, we're targeting our own um, targets, show us getting about sort of around the $5 million US per year revenue. Uh, over the next years, they're targeting a little bit more. They're a little bit more bullish about it, and we'll see where it goes. Right, so it's uncharted territory in a way. The it whole is. it's never been done before, but uh, you know there is no other organization like Caterpillar that covers so much ground. Right, and uh, this is from Mike G. If it comes to raising more cash due to negotiations being sticky with investors um, in the spin-off, would you consider a rights issue to uh, existing shareholders? Um, I think we would. Uh, you know, why wouldn't we? Another question from um, well, Steve C is talking about a listing in the U.S. Uh, well, an ADR listing rather than a, a full listing. Um, how important is the U.S. to you in terms of getting your whole idea, your concept um, to a to a, a, a monetizable? Um, I think it's level? important in the long run. I think it's important. You know, we are a technology company. Uh, our automotive division will be headquartered in the U.S. Uh, the industry really is, you know, it is the center, the epicenter for North American cars. Uh, it's important to us in lots of ways. Right, but just have a look at the chart of uh, the, the, the company over the recent past. Um, you had the spike up there with um, the Fovio phobi announcement, um, but we're still just getting off the ground. Is that, isn't that your view of the whole uh, situation at the moment? I think, you know, like uh, for seeing machines, this is seeing machines 3.0. You know, it's been through several iterations over its life. I've been here for five years. We set course on this transport sector strategy three years ago. We're executing to plan. We're sort of roughly where we expect it to be. And uh, I think it, it, for us, it's really all about seeing the possibilities going forward while we execute in the transport space. Right. A couple of interesting questions from Mike. C. Uh, you mentioned in a recent interview that C seeing machines have been, uh, has been approached by people from every industry. Um, you'd like to, you'd like to know a little bit more. Uh, you know, for a small company based halfway around the world from here, it's uh, we have visitors from, from you know, household brands coming to see us, asking us to do things. Uh, you know, most recently last week, for example, was a uh, major silicon company with a major government service provider from the U.S. looking at. Uh, you know, um, monitoring, uh, I guess, NATO and defense-related uh, air traffic controllers as a service. So it's those sorts of things. You know, it, it's often consumer electronics, it's transport, it's medical. Uh, it, it, uh, you know, the, the whole idea for us really about what we're doing, you know, today we monitor drivers looking for, uh, you know, trying to assess how much attention they're paying to the road scene. But what we're really working on is the empathetic machine, having machines understand what people are doing, what they're thinking, uh, whether they're able to do certain things, and really making machines more seamless to use. So this could, but this could be applied to people with disabilities, old people, as well as the drunk drivers and the people falling asleep at the wheel. So I mean, everything. You know, think training, think safety, security, education, uh, and really making machines safer and simpler. Right, and uh, even virtual reality situations, I mean, things like that? I think very much so. Artificial intelligence, you know, at uh, CES this year with Samsung, really, we produced, uh, imagine a hollow lens for a car, so turning that windshield into an enhanced reality device to overlay information in front of the driver without having them being distracted. So really, I mean, it's almost across the board. I mean, there's hardly it it's it's easier to list what might not, uh, where it might not be useful. Uh, you know, we, we know we have to have a focus, and right now our focus are these five transport sectors, but you also have to be thinking blue sky and what's in the third horizon. Right, Ken, I just wanted to ask you, uh, maybe it's a cheeky question, but uh, um, you're talking about, well, your, your company is dealing with, uh, I suppose, monitoring uh, the dri driver experience. Uh, but we're, we're already talking about, as well, uh, driverless cars. D is that against you? Or is that with you? Is it something you welcome, something you don't? Yeah, I think it's, it's something that, uh, that we will be part of. So the driverless car, I think there's a, a lot of activities, a lot of investment in the market. I think that people are underestimating the difficulty of making it happen. I think it's a little further out than people expect. But even you know, those driverless cars, you know, if you talk to Mercedes, uh, or Daimler, for example, you know, they're stating that they will never build a car that a driver can't drive if they want to. 
and even uh, a company of that maturity talking about how they will deal with autonomy. They're saying even in an autonomous mode car, they will never let the driver uh, go to sleep or get out of the driver's seat, for example. So we play a part in that. And if it is, you know, in car sharing, uh, think about cameras for biometrics, think of cameras for um, uh, video conferencing. You know, your car really, if you think about the Samsung display at uh, CES this past January, really what we did is we turned the windscreen into a information and entertainment system. And that can only be properly driven by knowing where somebody's eyes are, how they're interacting with it. So I think we have a long road, even in autonomy, ride sharing, about knowing who you are, uh, what you are, and how you are. So ironically, you might be part of the process that gets us to driverless cars. Correct, and then uh, a role in there about really it, it'll become occupant sensing or occupant monitoring as opposed to driving. What what are the what's the next milestone that you're aiming for, and what should what should investors be um, looking out for? It's a great way? question. I think really it's the uh, continuing the the trend with the uptake of the fleet product, find more channels to market, starting to work with more telematics companies as channels on the on the commercial vehicle side, and then on the automotive side, securing more OEM business over the next few years. Right, and uh, is there any particular thing you're looking for in terms of driving revenue that would really help you? Yeah, it, it, right now the, the near-term revenue is going to come from Caterpillar royalties and from the fleet product. So it is about getting those devices sold and connected and generating that monthly annuity. Right, and just as a, an overall view, um, tech stocks of all shapes and sizes have had a fantastic run. Yeah. Um, do you think it's justified? Do you think it's uh, too little, too much? What's your view of it? I think companies have to deliver value. There's a lot of hype in a lot of markets, and I'd like to think that we have some real substance behind us. The technology is proven. Uh, it's been validated by some of the biggest companies in the world, and it's really up to us to now capitalize on that for our shareholders. Right, and, and the technology is developing all the time, so, so Fovio could just be the first of many... Uh, products. It is. There's so much, uh, you know, the, the world is changing so quickly that the technologies and techniques that we use are changing so quickly and we're gaining, you know, just really leaps and bounds in performance compared to what we would have a few years ago because of the new technologies we're applying to our own technology. Ken Kruger, CEO at CEO Machines, thank you very much for being on ShareViews today. Thank you. And we'll see you next time.